We're speaking now to Mark Cooksey, Director and CEO of ABX Group. And today, Mark, quite a treat. You are taking us to Milan, where you're attending the Florine Forum for 2025. Thank you very much for having us along for the ride. Now, first of all, tell us, what are you learning about the markets, particularly with regards to hydrogen fluoride? Now, that is the product that you are seeking to produce from your Alcor pilot plant, which is currently under construction. Yeah, that's right, Danielle. So, yeah, our technology is to take an aluminium smelter byproduct and turn it into hydrogen fluoride, which is the building block chemical for all other fluorine chemicals. And so this this is the world's leading conference for fluorine. It happens every year. And so I've learned a lot about the hydrogen fluoride and, and fluorine market really. As usual, when you dig into the detail, it's always really interesting. So there's some real growth opportunities. The uh, fluorine is used more and more in batteries. Um, there's also some threats. You know, there's some legislation, particularly in Europe, trying to um, reduce the use of fluorine in, in polymers. Um, the, there's huge geographic variation. You know, China, again, is dominating a lot of things. And so the rest of the world's working out how to compensate from that. And then I've just met numerous people in the fluorine industry. So I, I go away with a lot more understanding of you know, the potential growth in demand and what that means for alcohol. Well, speaking of that networking, can you tell us what sort of feedback you're having? I understand that you did present on Alcor and your world first process. Yeah, that's right. So um, I think it was well received. I mean, the, the you know, the, the fluorine industry is well aware that aluminium fluoride is a major, in fact, I think it's the largest single application of fluorine. Um, but after that, they didn't really know much about it, you know, where it went in the smelting process, the aluminium smelting process, or about this byproduct issue. So, um, and there's a lot of interest in alternative sources of fluorine to floor spar ore, which is the traditional one. So, yeah, I think it was good because, um, you know, got to educate the people about the opportunity. And then lots of people come up to me afterwards to understand more about it. And, you know, people interested in new sources of HF and particularly in our case, sort of a green source because we're doing it with a circular economy approach. And finally, moving forwards, are there any things you're going to do differently or double down on given what you're learning from your peers and about the macro environment? Yeah, I think I think double down's the the common reaction often when these things, you know, you, you I, I think nothing, I haven't learned anything to massively change what we're doing. I've probably just learned, yes, those things that we want to do, we need to do them and do them faster. <laughs> things like understand, you know, who, who are the most uh, likely customers for our products? You know, are there opportunities to um, use the HF we produce, not only to produce aluminium fluoride for the Australian aluminium smelters, which is our main target, but also, um, uh, fluorine chemicals for other applications. And so a, a funny example is uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to a rare earth conference for our rare earth projects. And one of the people I met here today is also going to the same conference. So even though, you know, there's two people who have an intersection in both fluorine and rare earth. So, um, yes, yeah, going away thinking, oh my God, I've got a lot to do. Um, um, you know, we just want to do it faster. It's quite an intersecting set of niches that ABX is setting up there. And we are, as always, looking forward to following this story as it unfolds. Great. Thanks, Danielle.